Hey, this is Tim here. I hope you're doing well. Um, I want to show you. I want to show you a project that was done by um, three mechatronic capstone students uh, this semester. Now, uh, usually our our capstone projects are very very hands on, um, and they build or design troubleshoot some sort of real system. Um, this was done using, believe it or not, three different softwares. Um, the the we use something called Factory IO, which is a sandbox. Um, what would you call it? An automation design software or simulation software for factories and automation logistics. Um, this was their project. It was it was some sort of an automated sorting system with conveyors and an X Y and pallets. Um, all of this was controlled by um. A click PLC, a real click PLC that they all had, and their their click PLC is a program is about a hundred lo lines of ladder logic, which um, even thinking about it, I'm losing my hair uh, thinking about it. And then it was all controlled by um, something called Induceoft, which is an HMI software. So. Um, I have the three of them on the line here, and I told them that they we should make a little video uh, just to showcase um, what they've done. So I'm just going to run this really, really quickly. I'm going to hit start, and I'm going to load it, and you can see the conveyor is loading um, a lid, a, a silver lid, and you see it, it automatically um, sorts it, and it... Um, updates this in real time so this is the hmi um gerald m is working uh, right now uh, gerald can you tell us a little bit about um the hmi on induceoft for a second sure thing so honestly this was very interesting just coming into uh coming into this program not knowing what to expect but after uh countless hours of research, uh, I found that this is actually a really cool program to use. Uh, Indusoft is basically a program that you use to write HMI or human interface, um, human interface software or uh, human interface programs to use like in factories and such. So what you're looking at right here are like virtual buttons that you would have on like some sort of a touchpad or an iPad, maybe even have it programmed to uh, be on your phone where you can just look at the processes, uh, be able to manipulate certain parts of the processes of, um, of you know, of your factory or your work area, uh, all from like, you know, a handheld, or, you know, some sort of uh, human machine interfacing station. So the, basically, uh, all it takes is a little bit of uh, redirecting and like uh, routing and mapping of, uh, of like communication between like, the different systems because you have like three different programs that have to talk to each other. So uh, how did the, that how was did probably the hardest part. How did the three programs talk to, to talk to one another? They talk to each other through a program called or through a uh, through a language called Modbus. It's like a I believe they call it a protocol and it's uh, basically used kind of like the way English is spoken in most of the world. This is uh, something that is widely used throughout the industry to have communi uh, have so, computers communicate to each other. Um, did you get a whole Did you get a whole lot of help um, with the HMI? Did, did you get good step by step instructions to learn uh, Indusoft from me? Um, I <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to throw you under the bus. Uh, but no, I mean, you definitely put what? us on the right path and like being able to, <laughs> in order to, you know, find out what to do, which I mean is, is realistic in the real world where sometimes uh, people may not know exactly what's going on. You really got to do that digging. So I had to do a little bit of digging and I definitely talked to the uh, people. This program specifically is made by Aviva. And so I uh, contacted Aviva and gotten, um, you know, talked with uh, one of their representatives to get a little bit of insight on how to get started. And after that, it's kind of downhill from there. Just, you know, you know, uh, testing stuff out, trying stuff out, finding uh, new ways of doing things, forums, talking to people, uh, a lot of trial and error. And uh, just a lot of thinking, a lot of late nights thinking about what in the world I'm even looking at. But it all pays off. 
Yeah, as I, you can I, see, I, I was very, I was very impressed that you could get the three systems working together. Um, so let me ask you this. Uh, let me ask uh, Dakota. Could you could you explain what people are looking at here? What's so going on the, here? the brief overview of this project is we were tasked to design a auto loading warehouse in which we had 54 slots, which are nine rows or nine columns, six rows, and a vision sensor to detect what kind of material was coming through and then store based on what that material is. And if the rows or if the columns were full, we would just bypass it into the offloading section. The, the, yeah, like right there, like right there is what has just happened. Um, do, do you think factory, factory IO is a useful simulation software for PLCs and automation? What are your thoughts on that? I about? do, yes. Yeah. Um, now, uh, let's have a look. Um, Elena, how, how did you go about uh, designing the PLC code? That was fairly tedious. It's not a very hard code. It just requires a lot of the same types of inputs because there's 54 slots and they all have to have their own wrong with their own output. It was a lot easier once we figured it out with the counters, but the actual process itself is only maybe 20 rungs of that code. So it's not, so, it's not as and yet, very hard. We're loading this and you can see the inputs and outputs changing in the actual click PLC. Um, I was out between the factory IO, the click PLC, and the HMI. Um, what what was the most and, and anyone can answer this, but what was the the most difficult part of it, or what was the most frustrating part of it? I shouldn't have said anyone can answer that. I need to. I say someone. I say getting them all to communicate. Yeah, Just I I would have three to. softwares together was kind of iffy sometimes because they all have to talk to each other and I guess they don't know which one to talk to first. So sometimes that like was its own trial and error process of getting all three of them to communicate. Gotcha. I would have to agree with Elena. It's just sometimes things were offset, sometimes they weren't. It was all very tedious and uh, could sometimes be rather frustrating to get everything that worked. How are you telling the difference between each of the three uh, or there's there's really nine types of material that we're trying to sort. That is the uh, the vision sensor. Depending on which color and I guess pattern it reads on the top of the material, it will put out an integer, yeah. and then it gives a specific integer for each part itself. So if you just figure out which number it's going to put out for the different different parts, then you can put that into your program. Look, I, I, you know, um, I'm amazed. I remember a few months ago when we, when you kind of started this, I thought this was going to be way, way too hard. Um, but you guys, you, I, you did a beautiful job, and uh, um, I, I, I was fortunate enough to, to piggyback off, this, and I learned a little bit about Modbus and, um, and uh, Indusoft. Um, so this uh, HMI software is pretty nifty. Um, so that's it. Look, uh, well done, guys. And uh, Elena and Gerald and Dakota are, are looking for work now. So anyone that wants to hire a good controls technician who knows PLCs, HMIs, motors, um, uh, you know, send me an email and, uh, and hopefully uh, we can put the pairs together. So um, thanks, guys. And uh, look, have, have a nice break.